Okay, we've laid out the board, and in the tutorial before that, we did the schematic. Now it's time to gather everything up and send it on to the board house for manufacturing. We don't send the board house this uh, .dip file. We take the file and we export it as Gerber's, which are a production file format, and that's what the board house is going to use to actually manufacture this board. So what is a Gerber? A Gerber, number one, is several files. That's the first confusing thing about it. You take all those files and you zip them together into a single archive when you send it over to a quote. Each file it just defines a single layer on your circuit board. So you'll have one Gerber that defines the silk screen layer. You'll have another Gerber that defines the top copper layer. You'll have another Gerber that defines the bottom copper layer if you have copper on the bottom side, so on and so forth. And a Gerber is a very dumb file. All it has is a definition of a couple simple shapes called apertures, usually like a circle and a rectangle. Uh, there can be fancier apertures, but that's typically what's used. And a, a definition of where those simple shapes occur on your uh, circuit board. The Gerber doesn't even know what uh, the shape is, whether it belongs on a silk screen or copper or anything else. The way you'll define that for the board house is just in the name of each of those Gerbers. DipTrace makes it super easy to export the Gerbers, so we'll do that now. You go File, Export, Gerber. And this is the Gerber export uh, menu. And each of the layers that we're working on is right here for export. And we can change the properties as we export them. First off, let's define the apertures. Like I said, each Gerber file has a set of simple shapes, also known as apertures, and uh, the definitions or, or where they appear in each of those layers. So we'll just define the Gerbers. You hit on the Gerbers right there, and you just hit Auto. And you can actually see these shapes. There's an ellipse, a rectangle, an oval, and it goes on. Now the apertures are defined. Uh, we can export all of these layers by just hitting export all. We don't need all of these layers though. For instance, this top assembly layer, uh, we can keep it for ourselves. We, we don't need to send that to the board house. They don't do anything with it. The top silk screen layer, if your board doesn't have a silk screen, then you don't need to export this layer. If it does, then you hit export. And we'll just do that now. Let me, uh, we can do it here actually. So I'll make a folder called Gerber's. And I'll call this, make it as easy as possible for the board house, top silk. Now the silk screen layer, the top silk layer is exported. And before you export it, you can also hit preview and just see what it looks like. This is exactly what's going to print on your circuit board when it gets manufactured. Uh, the top uh, solder mask, again, if your board doesn't have solder mask, you don't export it. You can, but the board house won't do anything with it. Hit export, call it top mask. The top paste, the paste layer is, uh, are the apertures for a solder stencil, for a silk screen, I'm sorry, for a uh, solder paste stencil. If you're only doing through hole parts, you won't have anything on the top paste layer. And if I click preview, you can see there's nothing there. So I don't need to export that. This is the top copper layer. This is the wiring. We'll export that. Top copper. Same thing we'll do with the bottom. Uh, the bottom paste if we had any through or surface mount parts on the bottom part of the board. Bottom mask if we have a solder mask on the bottom. Silk screen if we have a silk screen on the bottom. That's pretty uncommon. And then the board outline. This is just the shape of the board. And then the board itself. This is the really just the inverse of the outline. When we've exported them all, you just click close. One more thing you got to export are the drill files, the NC drill here. Uh, the, this file is different than a Gerber. It doesn't define polygons or shapes. It just defines spots on the board where a drill should go through and, and put a hole. And it defines the properties of the hole, whether it should be plated or non-plated, like a mounting hole. And you need to find the tools here. Just hit Auto. And just hit, if you want to see it, you can hit Preview. And that's, that's the, the drill holes. And click export and just call it drill. Once they're all exported, 
you gather them all up uh, and zip them into a single archive and then you've collected all your Gerbers. So you've collected the Gerbers in the drill file and now it's time to send them on to the board house. Before they can get started though they need to know a couple things. First they're going to want to know what kind of material you'd like the board to be made out of. The most common material is called FR4. It's a fiberglass epoxy resin has a natural kind of dull yellow color. Then they're going to want to know how thick of a board you want. Uh, how thick like this. Uh, the most common thickness is 62 mils or 0 0.062 inches. Other thicknesses are available but this is by far the most common. Then they're going to want to know is how many sides or how many layers it is. This here is a two layer board. There are traces on one layer and there are traces and the copper on the other layer on the other side as well. Uh, you can do more complex designs that use uh, sandwiched multi-layer four, six, eight layers. Uh, but most boards are one or two layers. Probably most are two. And if you're trying to save a few bucks, you can do a one layer design. This is one layer. There's nothing on this side and the circuit is all on this side. They're also going to want to know if you want to do a solder mask. And that's a, uh, a colored, uh, uh, a, uh, it's actually a, a plastic resin that they print over the board uh, to keep uh, solder from uh, flowing between the uh, uh, traces. You can choose different colors. This is a white one. Uh, here's blue, this is another color. Green is the most common color. That's usually the most inexpensive. Uh, red is another color, black. And you can also do no solder mask, which it's a little bit cheaper and uh, maybe for the design you're intending uh, may be a requirement. Same thing with the silk screen. That's this uh, printed text on top uh, right there. You can do different colors. You can do it on both sides. You can also do uh, no silk screen if you'd like. Uh, you're also going to want to tell them what kind of finish plating. So uh, the, these are copper traces, but they're silver because the copper uh, has actually uh, uh, solder on top of it. So you can choose solder or gold, uh, nickel, uh, uh, carbon ink. You can do all kinds of different things. Most common is HASL or uh, hot air solder level and you can do a lead solder or a lead free solder. Uh, you see gold from time to time too. It looks nice and depending on your specific requirement you may use that. And finally, you're, if you're doing a surface mount design, you may need to get a stencil. This is a Mylar or Kapton stencil I got from O'Hara P. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive if you're doing prototyping, about 25 bucks. And the stencil is actually defined in the Gerber. You're not going to get the stencil from the board manufacturer. You're going to take the stencil or paste Gerber and send that to uh, the stencil maker. Uh, uh, Pololu makes them. I've used O'Hara P and they're fairly inexpensive. This one's 25 bucks. If you want to get a stainless steel stencil, uh, they run you know 100 to two to 300 dollars. Uh, depending on the pitch of your components, you may or may not want to get a stainless steel stencil. You have to if it's a very uh, tight pitch component. And that's uh, that's basically it. Those are the most important things you want to identify when you're ordering your boards. Uh, one more is the thickness of the copper traces. So how high off the board will the copper traces go? Most common is one inch, I'm sorry, uh, a one ounce uh, thickness.